With three games left in World Cup qualifying to be played in March, what are the scenarios that the U.S. men's national team makes it to Qatar? Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager and welcome. Today we're going to dive in to the possible scenarios of the U.S. men's national team qualifying to Qatar. What has to happen in the next camp? Along with diving into Mexico and a couple others are still fighting for a spot. We're going to end this video, break down the current table, the matchups of the teams still fighting for a spot in Qatar and we'll go through two or three scenarios that the U.S. makes it and puts the ghost of Kuva to rest. For this video, I will count with the help of JD, my dear Jamaican friend JD. So be nice to him as the reggae boys are eliminated. The good thing about that is that he will be very neutral in this video. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Oh, and wait. Yes, we will be releasing also this Friday or Saturday, hopefully on Friday, a full CONCACAF recap of all the games for all the nations like we did in the last window and everyone loved it so much. It'll be a very small summary of every single game, adding up to 20 minutes. With that said, everyone, don't forget to hit that like button. Check JD's channel down on the description. Subscribe to this channel also if you like. And comment down below your predictions of how World Cup qualifying is going to end in CONCACAF. Who are going to be the top four teams in the final eight? Thank you very much. Let's play the intro and let's bring in JD for this fun and insightful discussion. All right, JD. Long time no see. Last time we talked, your country still had a chance of qualifying. Unfortunately, Jamaica is out of the World Cup qualifying, which is good because that means you'll be very neutral in this video, while I'm not going to be. JD, welcome back. Um, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm always neutral. I think even I get, um, when I'm talking about Jamaica, I always give a, a, a honest opinion. And be honest, we still have a, po a, a chance left in it due to the fact that we heard some news that the costa ricans um we had two of them tested positive and were out were were made aware before and they still play them in the game so maybe we still don't see the, the end of jamaica but i know Felipe wanted wanted to be the JD, end but look look see. look you can give jamaica six points they still won't qualify okay give up uh, by now <laughs> all right all right let's but, continue jd so as we said we're gonna go through the table we're going to go through the table and then we're going to go through the matchups of the top five teams. And then we're going to go through two different scenarios of the U.S. men's national team and Mexico, too, to see if Mexico is on a comfortable situation where they could possibly qualify. So starting with the table here, just to summarize it to everyone, we have Canada in first with 25 points. And can we both agree that Canada is there already? Yes, I know Erdman talks as if like he wants to win every single game before saying it. But um, and the Canadians are always nice people, except Trash because he's the rude Canadian. But mm -hmm. aside from that, um, I think they are pretty much can um, qualify. Even them, I think, start believing so. But let's see still. Yeah, Canada's in a situation where they could lose all the three games left and would still probably qualify. So. I'm not, we're not going to dive into Canada too much in this video because mm -hmm. to me, they're in Qatar. And then from the United States to Costa Rica, which we're going to go through now, this is where the battle is right now. Um, United States has 21 points. They're ahead of Mexico because of the goal differential. Mexico's in third with also 21 points. Then you have a little bit of a gap between those two and the other two. Panama has 17 and Costa Rica has 16 points. The top three nations qualify directly to Qatar. Fourth seed plays an inter-confederate playoff that will face a team from Oceania. We don't know who so far. But yeah, the battle's there. Then we get to El Salvador, JD, which mathematically they have a chance, but we're not going to dive in much to El Salvador because just like we talked about Canada losing all and still making it, El Salvador could win every single game and they probably still won't make it. So not going to dive into that. Jamaica and Honduras, uh, they've been, to me, the two worst teams in this qualified. Jamaica, because of how messy it is off the field, you can talk about it a little bit. Honduras has just been messy off the field and in the field, but Jamaica's done, right, JD? Yes, I, I want to say, um, even in my live stream, um, I heard people saying that they don't want Jamaica to get the three three points. And from your, you, from your heard um, um, fans saying that, I don't believe they are pleased with what's going on. Remember, we just got a manager and we saw that the football has improved 
So at least we are happy with what we saw now. We just want some game under our belts to keep on improving going forward. I don't believe that we have a chance to go through because even if we get that three points, I don't believe we are going to go on and win the next three games. I, I never saw so much from us straight throughout the campaign because we keep switching players. We keep having play things going against us as well because we have to look at that as well. I remember at the start, um, um, the Premier League talked about they are not going to send certain players and the, the, the championship as well. So we had um spells when it, things went against us so it's not because we are only bad philippa would make you believe that we are just only desperately bad we understand that yes but um i think it's done for jamaica this time around and um we will try and prepare stronger for the nation's league and um the gold cup in the future yeah the reggae boys are finished but now let's move on in the video because this is not about jamaica and we're gonna go into the matchups here so the next window starts march 24th and ends march 30th so six days Three games. So tight schedule as always. I'm going to go through the schedule here. I'm going to read it for you. It's also on screen so you guys can check it out. But I'm going to summarize to a few. Canada, which we're not going to dive in too much, will play Costa Rica away, Jamaica in Canada, and then they'll play Panama away. The United States will face Mexico at Mexico, Panama in Orlando, Florida, and then we'll play Costa Rica away, a game that we usually always lose. <laughs> And then we got Mexico playing the United States in Mexico. Then Mexico goes away to face Honduras. Then Mexico plays El Salvador at home. Panama will face Honduras at home, the U.S. in the United States, and Canada away. Sorry, Canada in Panama. So Panama will play two home games. Costa Rica will play Canada at home, then El Salvador away, then the United States at home. So we look into all these schedules, J.D., uh, ignoring Canada, let's look into United States and Costa Rica. And I think it's safe to say that the United States has the toughest schedule out of these four. The United States will face three teams that are fighting for a spot. Not just that, the United States will also play only one home game. While all these other teams we talked about, Mexico plays two home games and they only face one team that is actually fighting for a spot. Panama plays two home games, and they're also all only facing one team that's fighting for a spot because they're going to face Canada in the last game, and Canada will be long gone to Qatar by then. Costa Rica probably has the second toughest schedule because they play Canada at home the next match, and Canada is still technically trying to qualify, so that will still be a tough matchup. Then they play El Salvador away. El Salvador will be eliminated by then. They play the U.S. at home, so they play two home games as well. Do you agree that the United States has the toughest schedule? Would If you were American, would you be worried? Of course, of course. You guys defeated the Mexicans a few times and all over Twitter saying that you are the greatest thing in, in, in the CONCACAF region. I think the Mexicans want one over you guys and knowing that if they do defeat you, you still have a chance to get not one of the qualifying spots. Because if Mexico defeats you, you know, you have to rely on getting a point, um, three points against Panama and that would put you on 24. And you said you always lost in Costa Rica, so it's a tough game for you. So 24 points i don't i'm not sure if 24 points would guarantee you in there if you went on to lose to mexico we're so, going to talk about that very soon about the point prediction hold on so on that. so i so i want to agree with you that um you guys have the toughest schedule and um i don't want to sell you bad news but it's not looking easy for you that's all i'm gonna say but we're the united states of america we find a way uh actually we didn't last time but um <laughs> So, so United States definitely has the toughest schedule here. They'll face three teams that are in the top five and two away games. While all the other nations we talked about, Mexico, Panama, and Costa Rica, they play two home games, one away, and they only face technically one direct opponent. Except for Costa Rica faces Canada early. That game can be, can be tricky because Canada still needs to guarantee the spot. So, yeah, that brings us to the next side of this. Um... We already addressed that, so everyone's aware of the schedule. If I'm going to just recap it for everyone. The United States will face Mexico away, Panama at home, Costa Rica away. Mexico will face the United States at home. They, then they'll face Honduras away. Then they'll face El Salvador back in Mexico at home again. Panama will face Honduras at home in Panama. Then they'll go to the United States to face the U.S. Then they'll face Canada in Panama. And then Costa Rica plays Canada at home so in costa rica then they go away to face el salvador they'll probably be eliminated by then and then they receive they'll they'll host the united states with that said jd i want to go through two scenarios here for the united uh -huh. states and since mexico 
has the same amount of points as the United States, I think this scenario applies to both. All right. Mm -hmm. So this scenario. So the first scenario I want to go to, and it's and listen, I'm gonna go through a scenario where the U.S. gets four points and one where they get three. I'm not gonna go through a scenario where they get five because if the U.S. gets five, they will mathematically qualify. So I don't have mm -hmm. to explain that. If we win the home game and draw the two aways, we're qualified no matter what happens in the other games. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's but true. but four points. We do depend on a few combos. So let's go mm -hmm. through that. And the same goes for Mexico, right? If they get four points, they'll hit 25. So if the United States wins their home game against Panama and loses the away games, all right, let's just do it that way, which it's possible. Who knows? Um, that will be three points. Okay, that's mm -hmm. the first scenario. Yes. Three points, which means we would hit 24 points yes, in World Cup qualifying. Points. In this scenario, let's say Panama lost the United States at home, but Panama won the two home games. So they That's got six, six points. points. 23. Means, 23. So the U.S. If, if the U.S. beats Panama, we are locked in ahead of Panama regardless of anything. Mm -hmm. That's good news. So you have to beat Panama. Yes, for sure. You lost to them last time. Uh, yeah, Zardis tax, but <laughs> Berhalter tax. But yeah, so if we defeat Panama at home, Panama cannot catch up to us anymore, regardless of anything. That is good news. But here's the bad news. Here's the bad news. If we win against Panama, but Costa Rica defeats Canada and Costa Rica, which can happen. Who knows? Canada might rotate. And then Costa Rica defeats El Salvador at El Salvador, which if El Salvador is eliminated, why can't it happen? It can and then Costa Rica beats the United States in Costa Rica, which seems to always happen. If they get nine points, Costa Rica hits 25. Mm -hmm. If they hit 25, they um, surpass us. Mm -hmm. So we would finish fourth. And because I'm assuming also Mexico would get more than three points, right? Because they mm -hmm. would have defeated us and get another point. So Mexico would be ahead of us and Costa Rica would be. But obviously, this is a scenario where Costa Rica wins every game. With that said, what this means is... If the United States gets three points, for us to qualify, all we need is for Costa Rica to drop points in one game. Mm -hmm. um, so one question to you. If you were an American fan, and I told you right now, the US, I, I know the future, and I said the United States is only going to beat Panama, would you say we're qualified? We will qualify if we do that. Um, based on the fact that um, Costa Rica is a very much experienced old team, because that's what everyone talks about them, but yet still they, see, they are still in it. So we should stop. We should uh, we should just kill that narrative of um, an old team. They are a very experienced team and know how to grind out results. Um, I know um, Brian Ruiz. He, he becomes a, a, a super subs right now, but I think Joel Campbell can always put anything out. So I don't want to say um, these guys are out. I think they have good complementary pieces and their experience i would say if you get three points alone i i am not going to say um united states is actually in it as yet until so, um the final whistle these guys so, are they are respectable so you think costa rica could pull off a nine point window yeah it, they, they pulled off seven points in this window i know but that's not nine yeah, but um, tell you what, tell you what, look at what they have right now. They have Canada, El Salvador, and, and USA. If you said they always defeated USA, um, I think they're going to defeat uh, El Salvador. And they can pull off a win against Canada because at the end of the day, Canada is already on 25 points. So it's even when people believe that they're going to come up with the same intensity, I don't believe they're going to do so. So maybe that would, would be opportunity that they could cre creep on uh, three points. I'm not going to mm. write off the old, old guys them as yet, you know? Give him a chance. Right. So to summarize this scenario that we just talked about right mm -hmm. here, if the U.S. gets only three points, by by three points, I mean defeating yes. Panama at home. If we only win our home game, um, all 75% we need, all chance. We need, yeah, I would say even higher that. All we need is for Costa Rica to not have nine. That's all we need. And then yes. we're good. 75%. So, so a pretty good situation. Yes. Yeah. People right. can almost pack their bag to Qatar. <laughs> almost. <laughs> and and for any L3 fans here, Mexico fans, the scenario goes the same for Mexico, right? If Mexico wins against the United States and the United States defeats Panama, Mexico pretty much needs a draw 
with El Salvador at home to qualify. So come on. I think Mexico can draw El Salvador in the last game or probably beat them. So Mexico in this situation is looking very comfortable. Mexico. They Mexico actually might be in a better situation than the US, if we're gonna be yeah. completely honest. Um, and I'm being honest, I think Mexico will finish above the US. I think they're going to beat Honduras and El Salvador. I'm very sorry, Filippo, but uh, we have to talk the truth. I think they're going to defeat you guys and they're going to defeat all the other two teams. What, what are you What are you trying to Are you trying to get canceled? No, I, no I'm just trying to say <laughs> I, I could see them coming out to prove a point against the United States because you guys defeated them twice. And I think... I think um, Honduras and El Salvador will not have that fighting spirit to, to, to force them off. So they're going to finish on nine points. I watched Mexico's games this window because they were later from the United States. So I watched them. They're not mm -hmm. looking good. They're not looking good. Um, I, I Can they beat the U.S. and Mexico? Absolutely. They're going to be playing at home. And I think the teams are very evened out. But I, I, I wouldn't be surprised that the United States can pull a draw in Mexico or maybe even win. Um, we'll see. The game will be there. There's still seven weeks for that. Mm -hmm. And we need to see the rosters and who's healthy. I think the United States and Mexico, their main struggle right now is having a player that can put the ball in the back of the net. Right? Raul Jimenez is not the same he once was. The U.S. doesn't have a nine that just pours in goals. Canada has that. And that has been such a big difference maker for Canada. Um, having David and Lair and just banging in goals. Mexico and the U.S., that's what's going to come down the last window. If one of them has an inform nine, it can be a difference maker for both teams. They have Funes Mori. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. One in every 70 chances. <laughs> yeah, he scores. Yeah, give him 75 chances, he'll get a goal. But now let's go to another scenario. And this is a scenario where the United States does a little bit better. This would be if the United States gets four points in the camp. Right. And as I said before, I'm not going to dive into five or six or seven mm -hmm. or nine because those we qualify. If we get five points, we're done. We're in Qatar. So four points right here. I'm going to put it this scenario. The United States wins the home game and pulls a draw with Costa Rica or Mexico. So if we so let's put the Costa Rica scenario. If we draw Costa Rica, mm -hmm. we're qualified. There's yes, no yes. more question because then they can't catch up and either can Panama. But then there's a different scenario. Let's say we tie Mexico, we mm -hmm. beat Panama, and we lose to Costa Rica. Then Costa Rica will hit 25 points. And let's mm -hmm. say Mexico beats Honduras and beats El Salvador. So Mexico would be ahead of us in points. And Costa Rica would tie us in goal different uh, in points. Yes. And then it would come down to goal difference. Goal and difference, yes. In goal difference right now, the United States has nine. Costa Rica has one. Okay, so for Costa Rica to catch up on us on goal differential, they would probably have to beat they would have to beat the U.S. by at least three to four goals, which come on, let, mm. let's be honest, that's not happening. They have not scored so much goals. They scored eight goals so far and conceded seven. So yeah. I don't see them scoring four plus goals. So would you agree that if the U.S. pulls four points, even if it's not a draw of Costa Rica, I think the U.S. is qualified. Yes, 100%. You, yes, I don't think they can beat the United States by so much. And they don't play that way. Mm -hmm. I yes, think so you, I yes, think yes. they can very much beat us in Costa Rica. But if they do, it's going to be a tight score. Um, one nil. Yeah, or maybe 2-0 if they get a counter at the end yeah. with Joe Campbell. Yeah, yeah, maybe 2-0. Oh, yes, in that fashion, like they scored maybe in the first half and you guys trying to get back something in the game and then they count on you guys. Yeah, but I don't see them creating and scoring two goals and just win it 2-0. United States is a very good team. I think you guys have underperformed because you mm -hmm. have a very, very good team. And what about our coach? Oh, God, you have to go. Um, Beralta, uh, I think... He's just not the best coach, you know. Um, I thought that he was second. He was better than Theodore Whitmore, but no, he's the worst coach because I think Paula. No, 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 no. The worst coach is Hernan Gomez from Honduras. Okay, all right. All right. He lost every game. He has. He. I think he has five games, five losses. He's worse than Berhalter. All right, then he's worse than him. But tell you what, if you gave him um, your players, maybe he might he might have done better, right? Maybe, yeah, that is. Yes, true. maybe, yeah. <laughs> So, so what the conclusion I think we made here is the United States and Mexico, regardless of the scenario, if they pull off four points in the next window, they will finish top three and they will yes. qualify. Which brings us to the final section of the video. Now that we concluded the main teams right there, the mm -hmm. top three, 
I think I, I'm at, uh, let's do our table predictions, uh, at least of the top yep. five, right? I don't care mm -hmm. about six to eight, um, but the top five, how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. Number one, I'm just going to go with Canada. I don't think anyone's catching up. Would you agree with that? Yes, I think Canada, um, Jamaica giving away three, three, three points. So I think Canada will want to believe that they are going to get three points from Jamaica. And um, definitely they are going to get some points from either Costa Rica or um, Panama, which would, would put them over 28 points. And I don't see none of the others reaching 28 points easily. You understand me? Anyone I saw um, reaching 28 would be uh, Mexico. I, I'm very sorry to believe about that's the only situation. So I would say the Canadians are, are, are up there. Yes, All right. Um Second place, who do you think will finish in second? Um, I'm very sorry, Filippo. I'm very sorry. I have to be honest. I think it's Mexico. I think it's Mexico. Mexico. I'm very sorry, fans, but we have to be realistic. As what he said, I should do, be realistic. And I think Mexico, We Mexico has easier runs. Honduras and El Salvador, I want to say that's going to be a, a six points regardless of how bad their team is playing. Here, here's my take on it. Um, this might come as a surprise to you, but I think Mexico will finish ahead of the United States. Oh, so why you, sp you, sp you spent all of the video fighting me? Oh my God. Because I just like picking on you. And this is my reasoning. Mexico plays Honduras and El Salvador, those two games. I think Mexico will get at least in this window six points. So if the United States wants to finish ahead of Mexico, we would have to probably beat them at Mexico. Not even draw, beat them. Can we do it? Man, I, I sure hope we do. And I'm going to go into the game believing. And I know our players will believe. But like you said, Mexico is facing this game as more than just World Cup qualifying. It's their honor too. They need to beat this. They've lost the last three games in the U.S. They have to win at home. If the U.S. wins in Mexico, yes, we can very likely finish in second. But if we tie, we're probably not going to finish in second anymore because Mexico will get six points on the other two games. With that said, I'm going to place in my non-biased prediction, mm -hmm. Mexico in second. Which brings us to the third seed. And I'm just going to say right away, the third seed will be the United States for me. Yes, 100%. I think the third seed will be the United States. If they don't finish third, I would be definitely shocked. First, Zach uh, sec second or third. Yes, Berhalter has to go if that doesn't stop me. Yeah, a third would be very good because these guys are young and they are learning on the job. And I think next cycle, even though they don't have to qualify, I think they are going to be a much better team with more experience. So third would not be a disaster. But if you come fourth, no, nah, man, no, no, no. He has to go 100%. Yeah. And then it brings us to the final one, probably the most exciting battle. Um, who gets the Inter-Confederate playoff? Panama or Costa Rica? Aurelio, I'm very sorry, but this is not looking good. I've said um, um, Panama will struggle to get a point in the first window. Uh, miraculously, they got it against Jamaica in a very good battle of a 3-2 victory. And you know, most teams just come and defeat us, even if we are playing good. And Panama struggled to get um, that game. Every time Jamaica advanced, Jamaica looked like they could have scored. So I think Panama is using the same players too much. And with um, Andreas Andrade um, got injured, their best centre-back. I don't know if he's going to be back. I think they are going to be strained. And I think they are going to struggle to pick up three points. If they don't win against Honduras, I can tell you Panama ain't having a chance to go through. The three points they have to target is against Honduras. But I still want to say, I think um, Costa Rica will tip it. I'm going to disagree with you there. I actually think Panama will make it. And I'll tell you why. Costa Rica faces Canada with Canada mm -hmm. still having to finish the job, right? They still have to technically finish the job. I don't think Costa Rica will beat Canada. They'll either tie or lose. With that said, with that said, I think Panama will defeat Honduras at home. They have to. Um, if they, Like you said, if they don't defeat Honduras at home, they're done. Um, they're mm -hmm. not qualified. With that said, when that happens, Panama will open a four-point gap. They'll probably lose to the U.S. and the United States. And then Costa Rica plays El Salvador away, which I expect Costa Rica to win. Mm -hmm. But El Salvador is a tricky team, right? You never know. But let's say they do win. That brings us to the last game where Panama will be one point ahead of Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Panama will play Canada at home. And Canada by then will be probably hungover from celebrating qualifying mm -hmm. to Qatar. They'll all be hungover at that point. <laughs> yes, yes. And and um Costa Rica will face the US and the US might be qualified by then or not or might be close. 
I think there's more chances of the U.S. giving trouble to Costa Rica and Costa Rica, maybe getting a draw, than hungover Canada celebrating qualifying to the World Cup facing Panama in Panama. So I think Panama will pull off fourth place and and then they'll go to the Interconfederate playoff. I, and could, then I could read off that really good, you know. The last time Honduras played Panama, it took a, a decision for Honor, on, um, Panama to get the win. That is one thing, and I and I would say when it comes on to when it comes on to Canada, um, I think Canada's team. If you you watch them from the time when they are playing Suriname, you always have guys um, like John Steen and those guys trying to get into the team. So I think if they do qualify, they are going to try and put other individuals in the team that want to fight for a spot. And these guys are a collective unit, so they are going to come up with the same intensity. So I think um, United States might f find it difficult, as what you said, like in which they always did with Costa Rica. So Costa Rica might pick up four points, and um, the maximum the um, Panama might struggle to be um, is three points. And I'm not sure because the last time they played Honduras, Honduras had the beating of them. You know, it took some some faulty decisions. So three and four would lead both of them and 20 points. And JD, right. let's talk about one thing before we wrap it up. Panama and Costa Rica have the same goal differential. So <laughs> so we don't know what can happen there. Who will score more? I, th I But the, here's the thing. I believe that if it's tied in goal differential, mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. criteria is goals scored. And then Panama is mm -hmm. way ahead there. Ooh. All right. Wow. All right. So um, Costa Rica need to get more points than Panama then, basically. I'm just, I, I just don't hold me accountable to this. I'm not sure if the criteria that after goal differential, if it's goal scored or wins. Regardless, in terms of wins, um, it seems like Panama will be ahead on wins as well because of, well, actually it will tie in win. It will tie in the number of wins if they, if they tie in points, it'll draw. So yeah, um, I guess it probably the goal scored will be the differential when Panama's ahead there. So if they tie in points, I think Panama will be the one to go through. Okay, maybe. then then you want that then. Look like Panama have the little edge, but I'm still going with Costa Rica. I just believe that Panama, um, because they didn't pick up the points that, I, that I've said they are going to pick up in the last round, um, I am thinking it's going to be the same. Maximum three, Panama will pick up in this round. That's what I think. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, comment down below who you think will make it to Qatar based on what me and JD gave you of information and what we talked about. Give us your opinion. Drop a like on the video if you haven't already and subscribe to IMAX at Football down on the description below. Great CONCACAF coverage and dear friend of the channel. Thank you very much, JD. All right, no problem. Bye-bye, guys.